Hello friends, welcome to four mics on a drum kit. Why four mics you say? Well, a lot of us have a four channel preamp. I have a Vintec 473, four mic pre's. You probably have something similar or you might have an audio interface that has four inputs. Four is a nice even number. And even in the context of maybe you have eight mic pre's and you wanna record a band, Four is a reasonable amount of mics to devote to the drum kit and get a somewhat versatile drum sound that you can use in a lot of different ways. This is like my most basic setup on the drums. I'm using sort of a modified Glenn Johns approach to the overheads. It's more of an overhead and a behind mic. If you Google Glenn Johns, you'll see that he did a bazillion records that you listen to and your dad listened to and maybe your granddad listened to. And he basically invented this approach to recording stereo drums. I put a microphone right over the snare drum and one sort of back behind me a little bit so that my body is blocking the amount of hi-hat that's bleeding into it. Just a little bit. The mics are kind of equidistant from the, from the center of the snare drum. I'll grab a mic cable and just measure it myself. To get it close, Glenn John says that he never measured He's a wizard, so that's okay for him. That's how I do it. I'm supplementing these shiny box ribbon mics with a bass drum mic, a Sennheiser E602 that's in the bass drum really close to the batter head uh, to get a lot of attack and a lot of low end to kind of supplement the roundness that I'll get from these microphones. And I'm doing a slightly different thing with the snare drum today. I have a Biodynamic uh, M88, I believe, and I'm aiming it right at the vent on the snare drum. I've seen other people do this, but I've never tried it myself. And I got to say, I'm kind of digging it today. I, I sort of struggled with the snare drum sound I was going for for a piece I'm recording, and this is where I ended up. So let's just check out this straightforward, simple sound. The great thing about this setup is that depending on how you're using it in the mix, you can favor the close mics and get a punchier, pokier sound, or you can favor the ribbon mics and get a rounder, more drums that sound like drums kind of sound. And even with the two ribbon mics, I can adjust them to sort of favor different sections of the drum kit. This mic will hear this stuff a little bit more, snare drum, hi-hat. Rack Tom, if there is one, Crash Cymbal. This mic will feature the batter side of the bass drum and the floor tom and the ride cymbal. And they do sound good panned out a little bit. It adds just a little bit of spread to the snare drum and the cymbals. So super great, easy, uh, doesn't require a degree in electronic engineering in order to figure out how to make this sound good. It does depend on having good sounding drums that you are happy with how you're tuning them and treating them. But it works on a lot of different things. If you put a more rock type kit underneath this setup, it's going to sound like that rock type thing. If you put an earthier like Jay Bellarose style setup in here, it's going to sound like the drums that you set up. And I really like that. It's very versatile and natural sounding. So this brings us to the curveball. Uh, I wanted something a little bit more for this piece that I'm writing today. So I added a fifth microphone and I've actually never used this microphone in this spot, but I'm really digging it. Usually I would use some kind of dynamic microphone like an SM7. Chad Blake famously uses a 441 in this spot on the drum kit, kind of looking at the bass drum beater and capturing a lot of the rattle underneath the snare drum. Today I'm using what is probably my nicest microphone, which is a Soundelux U95. It's a tube condenser microphone. 
and it's a beautiful sounding thing to behold. I'm using a Eventide Mixing Link as the mic pre, and in the effects end of the Mixing Link, I'm using a guitar pedal, a Harbin Audio Synesthesia Drive, to add some crunch and funk to it. And what I like about having a microphone in this spot is it captures this sort of dense, smacky, rattly, funky area of the drum kit. And if you add that into the mix, it kind of makes it feel more like you're hearing the drums in the room. When you sit behind the drums, you hear all of these sounds that are often sort of attenuated in these microphones. This allows you to add kind of some of the sound of this area of the drum kit and the sound of your ears compressing a little bit as you play louder. So I've also used this type of setup as the only mic on the drums and it totally works with the right kind of compression in the right setting. I'll play it for you in the mix of all the other microphones. I hope you found this useful. As always, be brave, experiment. If you set up like this and it doesn't sound quite right, experiment with how far away the microphones are from the kit, closer, further. As I did with the snare drum today, you can try all kinds of different things to try to find the sound that's in your head. Don't be afraid to mess around and don't be afraid if it doesn't look like what I'm doing. But this is a great starting place and I would say 50 to 60% of the time, this is the drum setup that I use in my home studio. If you have any questions, as always, please comment in the comment section or write me at hello at danphelps.com. And also, please be sure to subscribe to my weekly email. I've been posting some exclusive stuff for my email friends, a thing I call Friendship Club unedited audio from interviews and there's going to be more stuff coming down the pike with that so please i'd love to email you and share that stuff with you hope this was of use to you today and that you enjoyed it be well